<laughs> Welcome to the jazz edition of anime of Animazing, where the only songs we talk about are Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. Um <laughs> uh, hold up, I actually forgot what we were doing today, so I'm typing in the right anime right now. Oh, what were you typing? I was typing in next week's anime. I'm like, wait, I haven't even seen it. Why am I typing that in already? What was next week's? Um, Asoba or Sobi? Oh, Asobi Asobase. <laughs> I'm so scared to watch that, dude, because he's already shown me a few, like, clips on it, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? The, the opening and ending will not make any sense. Well, the ending will make sense to you, but the opening, you'll be like, fuck that shit. That's not what happens. Yeah. No. I already know not to expect anything cute from this show because I saw the episode with the robot. Ah, which one? Oh, um, oh no. Um, <laughs> the one where they they made a robot version of one of the girls that can speak perfect English. Oh, Olivia? Yeah. Yeah, and then it's just like, you can't be saying dirty things. Don't tell me I can't say dirty things. I want yeah. to. So it's choking the, the teacher. She's like, no, no, no. Yeah. I want to talk dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I gotta start watching that today. I'm actually finishing up Adventure Time. Ooh. Yeah, I got into a fight with Yana about it. <laughs> oh yeah, you were telling me about it. Yeah. Yeah. After, and I, I told her, right, give me until after the fifth season, and I bet you they started hinting at it. Boy, did that show get fucking gay after the fifth season. It got totally gay. It's like... It's like, not only are we insinuating that Bubblegum and Marceline like each other, we're also insinuating that they've had a thing already. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's a lot of things that I'm like, wait, this doesn't sound like sexual tension between two people who won't admit they like each other. This sounds like sexual um, tension between two people who had to end a relationship. <laughs> But also, after a while, Adventure Time easily has maybe one of the best tragic characters I've seen in a children's show, and that's the Ice King. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Simon Pet- uh, something- oops, I don't know what Simon Pentakoff, I think? Or yeah. something along there, yeah. Yeah, because obviously there's that Christmas episode. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, where you're like, wait, what the fuck is this show? And then as it goes on, they go into his relationship with Marceline. And then there's even a hint. Um, someone told me to watch those videos again. There's even a hint saying that he's older than anyone in the show. Like, he's not even a thousand years old. He's, like, older than that because they say he, he him and Betty were probably alive in the 1950s. Mm, yeah. Yeah, and because the, there's a, the, there's a, uh, of the fact that he opens when the video starts, you hear like horses, clock, horses like walking around, and the buildings look different. And then by the time he fully becomes the Ice King, or is in the process of becoming the Ice King, you see a plane flying outside the window, and the buildings are slightly different from before. Yeah. Yeah. So. So th there's that, but man, every time they go into like his relationship with Marceline, I'm like, why can't the show just be this? <laughs> <laughs> um, the hell, they even gave Marceline like eight episodes to herself, which was just like, not only was it pretty certain that her and uh, Bubblegum are totally gonna bang, but it also went into the fact that Marceline isn't half, isn't just a vampire. She was originally half-human, half-demon that would later on become a vampire hunter and then get herself turned into a vampire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dang, I missed a lot. I have not, dang, I have not watched them. Um, what was the last episode I watched from Adventure Time? What was that one adventure that, um, that Finn and Jake would talk about a lot? Which one? The one that, um, the one that made the Enchiridion. Oh, um... Yeah, there was the there was the episode where they found the Enchiridion, and then there's the episode where the Lich steals the Enchiridion, opens up a portal to another dimension, and then we get like the Jane wishes and stuff. That yeah, one. yeah, that one. Oh, yeah, that's like season four. So you stopped the season before I did. Yeah, I think that's where I stopped because why did I stop actually? Huh? 
Oh yeah, that's I right. Started. I just <laughs> I just discovered streaming at that point. I was like, ah, why do we have to watch a TV? Yeah, with me, I got I, I was getting kind of bored. I'm like, I do appreciate that they do get story heavy, but it's not enough for me. Mm. And and after um, Pendleton Ward left, um, his like co his co producer took over the show, and he he of course had goofy episodes. But it was a lot more streamlined. Everything that happened in one episode would eventually come back in a later episode. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. So I'm finishing that up right now. Um, but yeah, we should get into the anime discussion. Uh, no more smooth jazz. <laughs> yeah, no more. It's going to be smooth jazz from here on out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> We um, were so scared of getting um, like copyrighted that it's just like now we're going to play some gentle whispers, Danny. Some gentle whispers. Is, is that what it is? Oh, gentle whispers. Careless whispers. Careless whispers. I forget, I just know the songs are mean. <laughs> My favorite one though, and I still forget this band, but it's the one where it's like. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh. Um, yeah, anyway, let's get into our anime of the week. This is a pick that Lewis did that he was not able to, um, be there for. And then literally the day this episode was recorded, my, uh, laptop and previous equipment got destroyed due to some carelessness at my work. On careless whispers of a Danny. <laughs> yes, it was because of careless whispers. <laughs> okay. Well, let's get down to it. We are talking about anime guitars. An anime that's way sooner than I thought. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, that opening. Yeah. That game is glitchy as fuck and no one wants to talk about it. <laughs> I actually like the opening a lot from anime guitars. I love this opening. And then the ending was kind of annoyingly catchy as hell. That's why, that was the only reason I started skipping it, is because it was flat out like, I can't get this. <laughs> oh man. What is the symbol that's popping up in the face? Is that the title? Which one? That. Oh, uh, let me see. That. <laughs> I think it's just a question mark. Oh, okay. Favorite character? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Musashi Sakai. Oh! <laughs> and her best friend, the athlete. The yeah. one that gets fan service every episode. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm like, what's the point of this? <laughs> they literally only keep her for fan service. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, that's, that's the only reason they keep her. <laughs> I'm trying to focus on what you're saying, but this is too fucking catchy. <laughs> I'm like, drain out the catchiness. <laughs> and then, yeah, this is one of those shows where, like, they have parodies of other, like, popular shows. Yeah, flat out. <laughs> like, I'm a super shit. <laughs> they can't even... <laughs> they don't even go as far to even saying the full title of it. The, the, like, they can't even say the title of the show. It's literally, like, I think Rezo was, like, Rez... Like Remzo, I think they made like a joke of it or something. They made a lot of jokes, a bunch of shows, but to me the ones that got got to me were the posters, <laughs> because with my with my limited Japanese studies, I could translate some of the words and I'd be like, oh, that's so stupid. Because <laughs> literally, because literally, like a lot of the jokes from like those, like, especially like like Kon um, like Konosuba. Yeah. Instead of saying Kono Subarashi, it was Ano Subarashi. So instead of like, um, instead of like this, well, this world of fantastical things, like it literally just translates to that world of <laughs> fantastical weird things. It's like that world over there. So it was like one word differences. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, yeah, this, this is a show that you picked out that I had no idea what it was. <laughs> and it was one of those you didn't, you wouldn't tell me what this is about. So I started becoming worried that we might be walking into another fan service rally. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. And as much as I liked Showman Sample, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, that was just an excuse for fan service. Exactly. Now you, um, now you see what my issue was. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. And it's funny because Ben had a major issue with this show. <laughs> um, what was that? 
he he just thought some of the dialogue was like unbelievably cringy. Oh. And some of it was, yeah. yeah. But it, in all honesty, this show, it's not wrong when it says the things it believes in. Like, again, this show, but basically this show does a good job and a very terrible job at the same time at filling you in at what the anime community is <laughs> and some of the hardships going in, some of the great things going in, yeah. um, how the world around it is um, giving into anime, like how they have, they spend maybe like 10 minutes talking about how, how actual areas that an anime was based in kind of... Um, uh, kind of um, embrace that anime. Like, mm. for example, I think the village Elfin Lead take, took place in there's some Elfin Lead little things hiding over there. Oh, yeah. And then the one where, like, the, the one where, like, the tanking anime, like, you can see, like, cardboard cutouts, like, every now and then. Like, some places actually do, like, represent, like, shows that, um, that, that were pretty much, um, <clears throat> Designed it there as well. Yeah. And other, like, the cool things is, um, whenever they talk about, like, I hear an anime guitarist, <laughs> that I really liked a lot as well. It's just pretty much because okay, just like, okay, you know, this kind of sounds like it could happen, but I get, I get the feeling like it's kind of a, towards the extreme end of things. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, um, and we'll get to why I think at the same time the show kind of fails at getting that message through. Because literally the last four episodes are like, the fuck is happening? Oh, yeah. And then, like, the, the first, so... It's the last four episodes, but the first two are kind of like, okay, you kind of went over the line of exaggeration, but I can still get with this. The last two episodes are like, yeah, there's a reason this is happening the whole time. There's a reason why we have a talking cat. There's a reason why there's just random fan service that pops in. There's a reason why, um, why as the show goes on, it, it, um, progressively gets more exaggerated as opposed to the very grounded first three episodes. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, th this is a show that um, you're going to hear a very different opinion when you listen to the version with me and Ben because at the time I did not like this show and ben, Ben's not going to back down on it. But the more I thought about the show, the more I'm like this has to be up here. <laughs> this needs to be an episode because it really does do a good job at filling you into the community. And it's even a really, it, it gets really funny, especially when they go into conventions and it's like, true. <laughs> <laughs> and like the thing about these shows as well, like, is, um, cause like for me, like this show, whenever I watch shows like this, it just reminds me like other shows like Outbreak Company, you know, like all those other things that just pretty much describe things about like the anime community, whether it's like, oh, whether it's talking about merchandising or how to produce anime like Ashiro Bako yeah. or any other things as well like um, when I watch this show and everything's like dang you know I can see how different people from like different expertises and like how much exposure they've got to anime could have varying opinions and everything yeah because I know like when it comes especially when it comes to shows like this especially if you're somebody who hasn't watched that much anime it can really throw you into like new series that you never thought you would explore before. Yeah. Like for example, Konosubarashi. Like say you're like this is like you're barely picking this up because one of your friends recommended it to you and you're curious like, oh hey, is this an actual thing? It's like yeah, it's actually parodying this show or this show. Yeah, and um, I could probably imagine a few people being like, well, this um, I, again, I forget what the V Zero version of the show was. But wow, that show sounds interesting. I wonder if there's an anime like that. And it's like, yeah, it's called V Zero, and it's exactly the way they talk about it. Yeah. Um, but it's funny they won't use the title, but they use direct dialogue from the show. And then the characters, <laughs> as well. yeah. like really, really close on approximations of the characters as well. Yeah, yeah. Like I think they they showed what Rem and Amelia look like in their world, and it's just like. You guys literally made the hell longer on this one. Now you guys changed a few ponytails on the Amelia character. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I think my favorite, my favorite joke from that show is when, when I forgot I forgot what they called Amelia in there. But I remember one of the well, one of them when they were in the, one of the conventions, been like uh, Amelia best girl, and yeah. then one of them made the who's Ram joke as well. Yeah, like, oh, that's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the thing. The studio has no chill. <laughs> yeah, they. 
they, they, they really do like go after everyone in this show. Mm-hmm. And, um, it, like, like, man, I forget what joke it got me, but it was like an obvious go and log in joke. Like, like, literally, they were trying to cheer up one of the characters and they ended up using an entire, the entire line from Go and Logan, like, piercing through the heavens, believe in the person who believes in you. Oh, wasn't that when she was giving them the, 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 the speech to, from the student council why they should keep the cloud? Yes, the, yeah, that one. <laughs> but, and they, they even kind of whispered to each other, isn't that from blah, 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 and it's like, yeah, <laughs> it was. So... And, um, but yeah, I, I think it's fair now that we go into, we go into a couple of episodes and we actually tell people what the show's really about. Mm-hmm. So, fuck, how about you start it off, because I gotta get some characters. Okay. Uh, the only characters I really remember from that show was Musashi, Musashi Sakai Kai, or Kai Kai. He's my favorite. Yes. <laughs> He's my favorite from all of them. And then, yeah, that's pretty much, that's yeah, pretty yeah. much what I remember. I don't remember a lot of them either. I remember Aurora, which there was that weird thing where he was named something else, but then they suddenly started calling him Aurora, and then it was like, stop calling me that. And it's just like, since when did that become his name? I don't even remember them saying it up until now. <laughs> well, who was that? Uh, that, was the, um, the, that was the guy who was really into idol stuff. Oh, the pop new guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Ooh. Burped a little, but yeah. So pretty much like um, the, well, um this whole show like anime guitar. He's so, and this, <laughs> for, if you couldn't understand from what we were talking about, yeah, totally not being pretentious, but <laughs> yes, exactly. But um, anime guitar is pretty much to show about this girl, who um ends up getting like joining up an anime club in her in her school and everything, and the thing about her is that, well, she's. She's pretty much what we would call like a, um, one of the people who doesn't watch anime as much. Mm-hmm. However, she does have like this really um, this childhood memory of watching this one show that really captured like her interest in everything. Yeah. You know, kind of like us when we first watched like One Piece or Dragon Ball Z or Pokemon for the majority of us. I think the first time I saw an anime that had the, the effect on me that the, um, this anime had the effect on her was when I saw Digimon for the first time, where I was just about to turn the TV on on Fox and be like, oh, okay, time to watch, I forget, I think I was hoping Power Rangers was on already. Um, and then they moved to Power Rangers to stop playing Digimon and I'm just watching these monsters and kids fighting other monsters and that really stuck with me, which is why even till now Digimon is still like up on a list of its own of something I fucking love. But yeah, um, this anime, which looked complete, I don't want to be mean, it looked like garbage, (laughs) because there was like no clear consistency of what was happening in the show. We have a giant monster, but then we we have a giant robot, but then we have an idol turning into into a magical girl, and then we have a guy who's dying and he gets picked up by angels. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're talking about the anime that she was watching in the show. I, yeah, I'm talking about, yeah, I'm talking about that anime. I wasn't talking about the actual anime, I was talking about the anime that, that, like, she spent the entire show hoping to look for. It's funny, because when I was watching, um, when I was watching that, I had re- recently watched the, um, recently watched the video on YouTube, just like, um, just right random, mm-hmm. on, like, how idol shows got started, and it's all thanks to Gundam. Really? Yeah. Cause like, one of the things that um, cause like the thing with Gundam and everything, I did not realize this. I just I thought I thought I was like, huh. I didn't know they were the ones who did this. But there was one uh, one time in Gundam, I forget which one of the series, but there was one where there was like this um, there's a girl who was doing like an idol performance as the Gundam um, um as Gundam was taking off, and because Gundam had introduced this at first. That's where mom. Um, that's where they pretty much started like the thing where like oh hey like it's kind of cool. People actually like it when you see idols like singing like there's like an actual idol singing a song while like this battle with between giant robots is happening in the background. Was that the? Oh okay. I was thinking that was the Gundam where people stood in a room inside the robot and they were like motion controlling the. Gundam. Oh no. No oh, okay. I thought that's what was going on. No, they, it's not the Pacific Rim one. <laughs> okay, so that means the what was it? That means that this show was well aware of that then. Yeah. Because that was flat out. It sounds exactly like what you were just describing right now. And I was like, oh, wow, I did not know that's how Idol started and everything. And yeah, 
Because pretty much once I well, once they, once they introduced them to the, the show, I was like, but still, uh, this anime that she's talking about, it's pretty much got. It looks like it's trying to be everything and anything. And and, and, and that was one of the things. Um, this girl's name is Minoa uh, Minoa Asagawa. Oh, I um, I liked her too. I, I I really I liked most of the characters in here. I had a little bit of issues with. Hold up, I want to make sure it's not the one I actually like. Um, here we go. Um, I, I wasn't really a big fan of Miku, the one that only read, like, visual novels and stuff. Oh, oh. <laughs> I know, I know people, I know why people like it and stuff. And no, but for, no, I mean, no, when you said her name, it just kind of reminded me of, like, when, when Musashi, you know, tried to hit it off with her, but it was like... Uh, one of the reasons why I don't like it, I'm like, God, not only are you, like, I only read, I'm very picky when it comes to anime adaptations, but you're also a fucking Fujo. God damn it. He's a Fujoshi. And uh, and not even like the cool Fujoshis like Aki or um, Yana, no, she's like the ones that are like, I want all the men around me to be gay. <laughs> oh yeah, the ones that don't really shit people around them. I was like, oh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, sad. Yeah, and she was just like, don't worry, I won't tell anyone. I'm like, you can go burn, you can let go. But no, I, I wasn't really a big fan of her, and I, it was actually kind of cool, though, knowing that she was being voiced by Elizabeth Maxwell, who, you know, is the current um, Kotoko um, in freaking Ghost in the Shell right now. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, um, we have... Um, she ends up... What were we talking about? I forgot. Oh, so I was like pretty much talking about like what the show that I'm um, describing the show that she um that Minoa watched. Yeah. And how like um she joined the anime um, the anime club just to figure out what the name of the show was and everything because yeah. it was although she wasn't um savvy in anime it was still something that she did help um, hold precious to herself. Yeah. Oh, right. Because um what ended up happening was she was talking to one of her other classmates. Um, which I am currently hoping to try to find. I think her name was Subaki. No, fuck. Her I'll friend. The name. Yeah, her her friend. The athlete. Yeah. The one that you. I like calling her fan service the whole time. It's literally just fan service. Oh yeah. my god, man. <laughs> but um, yeah, with that character, she's talking to her and trying to see because lately she's been having dreams about that anime, mm-hmm. and she's been um. She was asking her sister, which, fun fact, her sister, I don't know if you knew this, Lewis, probably you did, but Anime Guitar was originally these little short films that would play in Japanese cinemas, and the two, and the show only consisted of two characters, and that was Minoru's older sister, and, um, this, and the president of the anime club. Um, I, let's see if I can get her name. Um... Wait, current or the past? The, um, she, it, it, it was the girl who went to America. Oh, the, the rich girl, right? Yes. No, no, that's Aoyasu. Oh, yeah. Shit, what was her name? We know his friend who likes to read light novels, okay? Kai, not Kai. Not Kai. I think it's Yui, uh, Yui Obata. Not all of them have, like, the little character bios. Oh, you, um, the one, you mean the one who, um, who liked to cosplay? Yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah, um, the, the show mainly consisted of those two, and which is why in one episode, um, Minoa's sister makes a comment about her possibly remembering her. Mm-hmm. So, it was, um, shoot, I lost my train of thought, right, but she's getting those, um, she's trying to, like, get information seeing if her friend remembered it, but then at the same time, this what we believe was a pompous rich girl in the class, overheard her, went over there and said, I need you to see me after class, over here, and then she's like, oh, is there a problem? There won't be one if you don't sh- if you show up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, she was being straight up scary. So when her and um, Butler showed up, <laughs> Your amazing Butler. butler. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
I, I even like what I won't say a lot, but I even like what happens to that character when the shift happens. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, I just like I just like um, what ha- um I just like overall how the people handled him in the convention center. Yeah, <laughs> remember when they got lost in the convention center? Uh huh. And, oh, yeah. uh, and then like the way I'll come like brother snaps her finger. You just see him start sliding under nowhere like the um and then one of the convention guards like hey there hey you there no sliding. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, uh, but she, this girl, Aisu, later, uh, reveals that, hey, he's a giant fucking weeb, and she overheard, um, Manoa mention anime, and is like, oh my god, are you watching this, that, blah, 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 like, you could really tell that this girl finally found someone that she could talk to about anime, but of course, Manoa told her, I'm not into anime. I mean, I used to watch it when I was a kid, but I just don't keep up with it. And that's when she started giving her assignments to watch all the sh- all, all the shows. Yeah. Damn. And, and, and it's like, oh, well, we, you should go to the anime club. So when they go, they find out, oh, the room's empty. But you know what? We should go and open an anime club. And right when she's like, hey, that's a good idea. Let me go get the keys to the room. And then she finds a weird door in the room <laughs> that's open. And when they open the door, out runs out a cat. And then they find a little red beret. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it, it's funny because she's like, oh, kitty, how did you get in there? Wait, what was the cat doing locked in a room with, like, no visible way out? <laughs> and, and so they begin to start the process of trying to look for other fans of anime. And, of course, yeah, she gives her a pretty big assignment of stuff. And if you're like me and when you got into anime... And all of your anime friends who are waiting for this moment to happen found out. Yeah, I totally felt her pain when the back catalog came. Oh. When they were like, oh, you have to watch this, you have to watch this. You can watch this and watch the remake if you want, but you don't have to. A little nod to Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but, but, but it's like, oh, okay. Um, but... Like, I, I remember going through that once I told them, wow, you know, with Killer, with me really liking the Killer Killer and Attack on Titan, is there any more stuff I think you guys think I should watch? Yeah, watch this. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. <laughs> oh man, I know, same thing for me, what happened? same thing for me. <laughs> because a lot of the thing, a lot, a lot of the mainstays and everything, and then Arisu kind of like, kind of has a point and everything's like just getting like, Game watching over the classics. Yeah. Because um, and by classics I mean like just some just animes that no matter like what you look at, they get referenced a lot throughout different types of media or anything like. Yeah. Because from for me like a lot of the biggest things like whenever I watch it like um like more modern shows and everything. Uh, Danny's piping up too. He what? Kn- he kn- he, kn- <laughs> he knows to drink the, the nectar of the gods. That was me last night. What beastie? <laughs> That's <laughs> the deep voice. I am not going to drink for a podcast unless we review something like really, really bad, or we do like an audio check. I've only been drunk on a podcast once. Ooh. Yeah. It. I need to put those on YouTube, but they were for these really bad movies done by a guy called Neil Bing. Uh, yeah, I was drunk on one. I couldn't go through that movie sober, so I drank. Dang. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so like, <clears throat> a lot of what this show does as well, it's kind of like, Despite how a little bit chaotic it can be, like the plotline can be from time to time as well, it yeah. does slowly introduce you to a lot of like a lot of mainstays when it comes to being an anime fan and everything. Like not only like doing like doesn't like like what they mentioned the pilgrimages mm-hmm. going to like places like oh these are like must pa- must must visit places like where you have, need to go at least once in your life. Yeah. You want to get like a full experience of things, but also just getting into industries as well like. Based on what you're, based on what you like, are you the person who likes to collect figurines, or the person who's like the convention goer and likes to cosplay, or the person who prefers while well, watching anime and then like, um, and then re- later on picking the manga or vice versa, and other things like that as well, or are you the person that like could, um, goes into like Chunibuyo, which by the way, oh my god, that movie was so good. Mm. Oh yeah, I'll have you talk about it a little bit uh, before we close out. I wanted to open up with that, but <laughs> we got distracted. Exactly. Right. So. Yeah, and one of the things that really helps your point is the fact that every character in here is a type of character you will meet in the real world. 
you have the girl who's super into anime, but, you know, we'll hide it. But once she's in her group, she'll come out of a closet with Arisu. My question is, where the fuck are all the Rachel Joel Summers that are into anime? I get to see right. one. I've never met a rich person who's into anime. Well, no, that's mainly because all the rich people who are, all the people into anime who have money are, they're all on YouTube. Oh, that's true. <laughs> like, I think right now Joey posted a video about his $10,000 anime collection. Oh. I'm like, I don't even have $10,000 in my bank account, you motherfucker. All that ad revenue. <laughs> um, I should know. I should have studied. I, why couldn't I learn about computers? I could have studied YouTube as well. Right? I'm like, I should have done this sooner. <laughs> um, but. <laughs> envy. But also, <laughs> let's not forget about how fucking difficult it is. And every popular YouTuber you see today, it was a fluke. Because mm-hmm. there's that high percentage of, I'm going to become a YouTuber but you never took off. And then you have the people who are like, I'm doing this for fun. And then they take off. Yep. And then you have people like Joey and Gigguk who are now, uh, Joey, Gigguk, and Aki. I would even say mainly Aki and Gigguk, uh, to the high extent Gigguk, who are not only like main representatives of the community, but they are having a genuine effect on the industry itself. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think I could be horrifically wrong, but you know how Anime Strike got um, got closed down. Yeah. Uh, uh, there was people who said there was an offhanded comment. One of the people said while commenting about why it was getting shut down, and mentioned something about a video that they were sent. So that could have been Gigix's video, who was talking to them saying how this, you should make it a separate service instead of having us pay for Prime and then pay for Strike. Yeah. Yeah. So it, w- it was definitely a, um, um, they're definitely having a very massive impact right now. What happened to my, um, so, sorry, there's a thing going on right now. Manny's the, Manny, if, oh, Manny, <laughs> Danny! <laughs> If you if you can if you want to understand what Danny's doing right now, he's trying to upload his hentai onto my main desktop. <laughs> Stop! Look, you live by yourself. I need someone who will not get in trouble when I'm trying to not get in trouble about installing my stuff. Hey, just just as long as you as long as you put your name on your file, we're cool. Yeah. <laughs> Don't. Uh, I'll mark it as schoolwork. School. <laughs> <laughs> oh god no. Um, so anyway, yeah, the the kid you you have um, Aisu, then you have um, uh, Kai who is Masashi Masa- Kai Kai. <laughs> yeah, who is a Kinubio, uh, a Kinubio. Yeah, thank you. Um, For all of those who don't know what Kinubio is. Chunibuyo is an actual term in Japanese culture. Yeah. <laughs> I double checked. I'm a psychology major. <laughs> yeah. It pretty much stands for um eighth um eighth grader syndrome. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's literally what it means. Eighth grader syndrome, and it's pretty much it's pretty much um it's a state where like a person becomes delusional about whatever fantasy they have, and so. Pretty much think think all the way back to like your childhood when like Naruto and Death Note were a thing for you and you would run around and rece- and um and research like doing the, the ninja oh, run no. or mastering all the hand signs and everything like and doing all your things as well. And you never grew out of it. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty much what Chunibuyo um what Chunibuyo is is it's pretty much this delusion that a person has in their head that like, oh like I'm a ma- I'm an actual anime character. But yeah. like in real uh, people actually do actually do this in real life. And like for them, it takes some time to like snap out of reality and be like, no, like this is like this is something separate from me. Like I'm, this I have to realize that that was, at some point, like this is not what, what's actually happening. Yeah, and with um, the but the difference between Kai and um, and Rika from uh, from uh, love delusions, love Chunibuyo and other delusions. Yeah, um, is that Watch Rika? It. Yes, um, we will. What we have to find, a, we'll probably do another redo. We'll do another redo one day, um, because I remember it wasn't really that I thought I was okay with the episode, but you know it could be better. Um, there was a Rika, there was a Rika and a Dark Flame Master that cosplayed over there, mm-hmm. and the funny part about it is, I'll tell you guys a little bit later about it. But there was a, there was a, no, those two were definitely um, 
the, the way they think the things happen in the theater, I was like, oh, it's so perfect. Yeah. I feel like it's a real life drama. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the difference between those two characters is that Kai was a Junibyo, but at the same time, he was. He, d- he did have moments of snapping out of it. Mm-hmm. Like when they told him to stop, he'd stop. Um, he wasn't completely out there. He, it sounded like mainly he was doing it for fun. Yeah. Rika was an actual, like, it was a disorder she had because she was still trying to get over the loss of her father. Mm-hmm. And that, um, not only that as well, but like for her, like this was something that was like a big part of her identity. Because a lot of the times it's all like, and you'll see this in the movie. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> but yeah, like she explains to like in, like in the movie she gives it, she she explains um it's pretty much explains like to everybody like why so why this is so important to her like why her chuni bui was like a big part of her and everything. Hmm. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll get into that. Love <laughs> drama. <laughs> um. Anyway, <laughs> god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you like this character from this podcast I'm listening to, um, which it, it's like a Star Trek parody, mm-hmm. but they have a character which is like a tiny sentient bean <laughs> called Bino, and it just talks like in third person, oh. and every time um, drama happens in the show, you just hear the little character run into the room and like, mmm, Bino thinks drama is delicious, ooh. Bino loves drama, right? <laughs> like that. It sounds like you right now. <laughs> you Lewis, love drama. Lewis doesn't know how to react to drama. He just knows it gets him giddy. Yeah. <laughs> L- drama gets Lewis giddy. <laughs> <laughs> just um, not real life drama, though. I have yeah. done a good job avoiding that. Oh, please, God, no. No real drama. Um, so, um, you have him. You have Musashi Kai. And then you have another, you have um, Miku, who is kind of those um, people that I've had a lot of issues with within the committee, community. And that was the people who they believe the printed work is superior and, you know, they'll still watch anime, but they're super critical of it. Oh yeah, they're, the, they're usually the type of people who will fight you with when it comes to like the anime versus manga thing. Yeah, and was it her or Arisu? Who had the problem of why would you read a manga if you already saw the anime? Was that Arisu? I, I that forget her? which I forget which one it was. Yeah, but the the Arisu and her definitely were at odds with each other. And when it definitely does come to um which one of these characters represent us the best, I would say I'm within Arisu's camp by now. Um, if this is a few years ago, I would still be Manoa. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, like, I've always had issues with those people because I'm like, look, it's okay if you think that, just don't ridicule other people for, di- you know, for not having the same thoughts. Mm-hmm. And, um, and the show did a really good job at, um, still making her likable to a lot of people and still representing that this is a type of person who exists, but this is the way you need to handle them. Like, yeah. don't, don't be mad, don't ridicule them, uh, don't berate them, just hear them out and talk to them this fashion and you will be fine. Yep. Yeah, so I, I thought that was really good and that was one thing I wish um, I could have talked more about in the first review is how mature this show is until it stops getting mature <laughs> yeah <laughs> no yeah because it's pretty much just like how you describe it like at one point like you can see like they actually get really serious and mature about like very topics and everything yeah and then the next it just gets ridiculous <laughs> yeah it's like oh okay that killed the vibe <laughs> yeah it it it, it, it ooh, sorry about that um it was something that i if they had just left that out and went all the way through with what they initially started out with it would have been really good but at the same time, I wouldn't say that the show hurt too badly from what they did in the last couple of episodes. <laughs> At least I don't hate the show for what they did. I'm just like, okay, <laughs> this is weird. Uh, but but yeah, like um, then we have shit. I forgot his name. Which one? Oh, the the uh, the the Ikiman? Yeah, is that what they're called? The idol lovers? 
No, Ikimen just means like a really pretty guy, like a pretty boy. Yeah. Um, he... What is it? Not, yeah, um, yeah, it was Nakano, and for some reason they stopped calling him um, Aurora. But, um, like, he was a guy who, he was... That, that, that is virtually nothing wrong with him. He's not trying to hide anything. He's just a dude who really likes idols, but at the same time, he's popular. Yeah. And he hasn't really met anyone for him to share his thoughts. So once he joins the club, he's the one that's like watching not Love Live or um, Horror P or like stuff like that. <laughs> I think even at one point they ask him like if he really is a fan of anime and he under his shirt is like a logo for like another anime. Yeah. Yeah. And like underneath his blazer, he keeps like a, he keeps like an idol group shirt on him. Yeah. I was like, dang. Yeah, this guy's into it. This guy goes hard. <laughs> yeah, and the thing with this character is every time Manoa and them hit a um, like a snack in their relationship, it was always him that would say just the right thing to get her through. And even as it goes on, that that itself kind of makes sense mm -hmm. because it became a pattern. It was there's a rift between them, or this, or the um, the student castle's trying to dismember the club again, and he's just like something wise. Oh, that's perfect, and they do that like five times. I know. <laughs> for, that's what for me. For me, like like the longest while, I'm like, damn, <laughs> I can see like a, a potential ship between these two. Oh yeah, no, the, the, if it wasn't for what they did with that character later, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure that was a ship a lot of people were hoping for. Oh yeah. Um, oh, but, um, and then of course everyone knows who the top Yuri ship was in that show. All three of the other girls. Um, and then they had another girl, we just said her name not to Yui? Me. Yeah, Yui. I identify with her. I think we all do. <laughs> I think a good push, a good portion of people identify with her. Her, I really liked her character's show. She was basically a cosplayer. Yep. She loved cosplaying. And one of the big things with her though is, she, at one point in her life, she got sent to America. Mm -hmm. And that's where AX made its cameo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then she um, ended up like. Walking around, she had no friends. Uh, she was bilingual, but at the same time, she would felt like she was in a completely different culture. Yeah. Until one day, these group of American cosplayers saw her, and she became friends with them because they saw she had a pin of another character over there. Oh yeah. yeah. And they're like, "Oh, we want to say, can you like cosplay with us? Because we need someone to help us get the lines right." And it really, that stuff actually really does happen. Um, that was happening a lot in my high school where like these Korean kids are coming in and they were meeting the weedy kids in our group and like in, in our school and they were just bonding up and stuff like that. So it definitely happens. Um, but what was the thing that you said you felt connected to with her? Oh, so yeah, pretty much you just pretty much nailed what I was gonna say as well. Because especially like a lot of the time, a lot of the times, and then this is pretty much like how it's gonna work even throughout college, university, and whatnot, and everything. Mm -hmm. But like, whatever you put on display on your bag, like badges wise and anything, like it's there for a reason. Like, cause just like depending, like depending on who the person is or anything, it's a pretty good conversation starter for them as well. Yeah. Cause like. A lot of people like it may seem like a little bit intimidating and be like, oh god, this is like a complete stranger. I don't know if I want to talk to them or not. But hey, if you just look at their bag or like compliment them or the pins or anything, it's a good conversation to start to talk about like in similar interests. Yeah, like um before I knew it was her, when I saw Aki, um all I saw was a uh, Asian girl walking around with a Jinji Ito uh, book. And I'm like, oh I should go talk to her. And then I looked at her again and, you know, I've, I've said this story a thousand times, but yeah, it was one of those, it makes it really easy when people see me walking down the street with the Kingdom Hearts beanie, which I almost never take off now. Mm. I gotta wash it. <laughs> <laughs> it's filthy. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, like, it, you do see people and they know, oh, he must like Kingdom Hearts or stuff like that. Oh, he must like whatever t-shirt I'm wearing at the time, like, it is a really good conversation starter, especially when you're thrown into an environment where you're forced to sit down with people you have no idea who they are, 
it's always good to kind of be like, oh, you like this, oh, you like that, oh, I see you have this pin, stuff like that. Yeah, unless you're like me, where well, I'm socially awkward, so it takes every fiber of my being to go talk to someone. After taking speech classes, I, 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 I've, uh, I've got, I, I don't, I don't get, I don't get it awkward anymore. Oh, I think it got worse after I did speech. Because like after speech class and everything, I just pretty much like whenever I come to strike up a conversation or anything, I just literally just go up to the person and be like, hey, and then like, oh shoot, who the hell are you? And be like, hey, oh. don't kill me. <laughs> and be like, don't worry, <laughs> you don't know it yet, but I'm gonna have a conversation with you. You just get up right to that face. You don't know it yet, but we're going to be friends. We're going to be friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so moving on. Oh, this is no longer going to happen with me in the anime club. Why? No. Are you okay? Oh, they're all degenerates. They're all degenerates. <laughs> it really sucks that we can't tell them to watch this podcast now. <laughs> exactly. We just lost an entire potential audience. Yeah. <laughs> what did he call us? <laughs> I don't want to alienate them. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I'm I'm okay. I'm okay with like me voicing my opinion with them. Like I like to be honest, you guys. I don't actually think like they're degenerate degenerates. Yeah. Just FYI, this is just me being stupid and <laughs> kind of just saying it after. But the reason why I say they're degenerates is because you know they voted for Prisma Ilya Kalian yeah. as our mainstay anime, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> and I mean, given we had a couple of like the people from our anime. Club, you know, before it crashed and burned. Ben. Um, what? Ben. It, it was not Ben's fault. No, I'm just saying, like, Ben's probably one of those people who were like, oh, I, if, I, if I did join the anime club, I'd think of him as a degenerate because he's into NTR. Yeah, but Ben would have been a degenerate too. But we had a couple of, um, we had a couple of them admit that they were listening to the podcast uh, for a while. Um, and I said a few things about them on that, and they didn't really seem to care because they realized, oh no, he's kind of right, <laughs> kind of. Um, the, that club was a mess after the original um, president of the club left. But yeah, um, well, now that we kind of established the um, like the characters and stuff, we could probably talk about like some of the things they do in here. And I think one of the things I almost immediately want to talk about was that convention episode. Due to the fact that we just left convention season, and now the fall season's about to start up with, uh, what's next? Anna, not anime, uh, Comic-Con LA, I think? Yeah, Comic-Con. Yeah. Stanley's Comic-Con. Yeah, like, that one's gonna start up soon. I'm actually gonna try to see if I can go to that one. Um, even if I have to call out for the three days as active, because I don't think I have time to request all the days off now. Mm -hmm. Um... But, uh, but, but, um, it, this episode was unbelievably painfully true. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so. so it's true. When they went to comic kit, right? Yeah. But, but, like, um, basically all of the characters, um, as a way of bonding with each other, they go to a convention. Mm -hmm. And they literally cover everything. You need to come with water. This usually happens right in the dead of summer, so you need to have water. One bottle of water isn't going to do it. But, at the same time, you can't go to a convenience store close to the convention center because it's going to be crowded as all hell, and everything will probably be sold out. <laughs> And if you live in America, remember, it's a bad idea to buy anything nearby the convention center because usually businesses do hike up their prices for those type of commodities. So be careful when you go when it comes to shopping there as well. I walk like five blocks away. Um, you guys know which that I'm talking about. I walk all the way to that fucking 7-Eleven. Me, me and Nessa just like no, just become nomads. We literally like stock up on as much food as we can and we just eat whenever, whenever it's possible. Mm -hmm. Never. Never eat in the convention hall. Go to a food truck, but never get food directly from the convention hall. No rip you off. Yeah, I am not paying nine dollars just for French fries, like a medium size of French fries. You guys can go fuck yourselves. Um, but man, when they talked about that whole convenience store thing, I was laughing my ass off because that happened to me not too long ago. That happened <laughs> to me at AX. I'm like. Fuck, I'm gonna have to be- I'm gonna be in an outside line for like five hours waiting for this fucking JoJo thing. Um, I'm gonna stock up on some water. I almost got locked out of that panel 
because of how long I was in 7-Eleven just waiting to buy something. It was insane. It was like, the, the people at 7-Eleven were loving it because they were making all this money, but I was just like, I gotta go. I was in there for 40 minutes in line. Dang. Yeah, it, it was bad. <laughs> but it, it's funny when they're talking about waiting in lines and how there's lines for lines, which was the case for the Faku rave that was going on. No, the Faku rave this year? Yeah, it was on... When did I meet Regina? It was on Friday. Oh, I think I went that day. Yeah. Uh, no, you went on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, so it was on Friday um, when that rave happened, and that one literally had a line outside, they move you in, and you go in a line inside, and then they move you to another line, which is you need to wait for someone to leave in order for you to go in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also, I learned how freaking awesome the 21 and over lounge is, so if anyone wants to find me next year, I'll probably be there when I'm not walking around the convention. I think for me after this AX, <laughs> I found I, I found a new guilty pleasure. What? Dressing as a maid. Oh god. No. That was so fun. It's gonna be a. I can't wait for it to get out of hand to the point where you just dress up as a maid all the time. <laughs> I did it once as a joke, but now I just can't stop. No, I just can't stop anymore. I'm, I mean, given the fact that you finally showed me the sign you guys made for AX, um. Advertising the podcast. Oh god, that's true. If we do end up doing like video formats for YouTube, I'm like, ah. Oh, I think mean, you don't have to do that, but the fact that you made that your avatar, you kind of drew, wrote yourself into a rabbit hole there. And Danny, the moment you said I don't have to, like you, that's like already for me that registered as a challenge. I'm like, bet. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm gonna, I will force myself to. That was not a challenge. No, you, uh, it doesn't matter how you say it, I'll take it as a challenge. Alright, so Lewis, how about you bring up um, any, any example you want to bring up from the show that you'd like to talk about? I think for me, one of the things I want to talk about is how when they, when they were making their own anime short. Oh god, yes. <laughs> and then like the arduous process on like, okay, we remember we've got five minutes to work with here guys, so what type of script are we going to go for? Like what's going to happen within these five minutes? And then how are you gonna be designing the characters and everything? I like when they make uh, I like when they make a PV for it, and it was literally just done by Arisu's um, butler. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, wow, who made that? Oh, that was all done by Sven. Um, he he storyboarded it, animated it, composed it, and you just see him like his hair's all disheveled and he has bags under his eyes. <laughs> 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 and it, because for me the thing that like the thing that hit me like the most about this is that I, not too long um, when I was in like Glendale Community College, yeah. I actually ha I actually had to work on an animation on my own as well, and I had to do like pretty much what they did like a low end animation. Really, I thought you um, I thought you were studying psychology. You're doing animation. Right? No, this was like for one of my classes. Oh, this was for my ethics studies class. Because the thing about it is, is like we had to do this one project where we had to like do like either like um like a video format or um or recording or something, um describing like something that we learned in class, and like me and my me and my group of friends were like, oh you know what, like how about we just do an animation, like okay, like we'll do like um I'll just like I'll just get the recordings for like voice actors and then for voice acting and everything. Connor helped me like with choking noises and stuff. Yeah. So, <laughs> hats off to um to Coco. Yeah, Coco, the, he will come back. <laughs> Eventually, I just gotta find time for it. Um, but yeah, so when they were just like when they were just talking about like all the things they had to go through to like get the scripts out and then like making an actual storyboard before you actually do the animations and everything, and then making the animations. Well, for me, the thing that sucked the most is I had to do it frame by frame because I didn't have any of like the fancy equipment or anything from GCC. Yeah. I literally had like, okay, what can I get for free? And it's like, like oh, become an animator yourself. So you had to set like how many frames do you want per second and everything mm -hmm. and then like from one frame to another you have to set the animations in between so literally I would spend nights uh, go up, literally spend nights with making like major like the what was it like the keyframes yeah so it's like saying like oh, okay so this is what's gonna happen for this like first second and then this is gonna happen the next second and then 30, 29 frames in between just me just me like okay now I have to make it look fluid and I was like ugh yeah. <laughs> this is hurting me I feel really bad for these story for these story type animators because they they some of them turn out a video like every two weeks and it's like 
See, now I see why you have like an entire person team helping you make these. Um, it's a daunting task with just one person, and then, which is why when I, when I did that for my ethnic studies class, I was like, okay, I think I've like infinitely have more 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 res, more respect for for, for for animators, not Berserk though. They they cheated no, with 3D. No, they that 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 is there's a difference between we are doing with what we have um, compared to we are doing this because it's easier because yeah. people forget how easy it is to use and control 3D models and it's e and then it's more easier to recycle as well so you don't have to worry about like oh starting like a new keyframe for like a new animation sequence you already have the models there all it, all it is is just a matter of like and putting it into the animation software and the computer literally fills up the rest. I learned this from like um from an animation class presentation when I was giving tours at TCC. Yeah, like one key one prime example, um, though I don't think a lot of people will remember this, but in Ready Player One, there's a shot where you see the Ninja Turtles fighting. Mm. And those are the Ninja Turtles from the 20 14, 2016 movie because it, they already had 3D models of those characters created so just throw them in another movie instead of having to animate the turtles from well, maybe the 1990 movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so th that's, that, that's why um, when you see something like Berserk and how horrifically animated it is, it is mainly an issue of laziness and incompetence rather than just they're working with what they have. Like, uh, Mob Psycho, the guy has no real artistic talent at all, but he is still giving you a fantastic written story, and he wants to do it all by himself at his own pace. So if it does mean, yeah, we're going to get a mediocre drawn manga with a fantastic story, then so be it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, lo I still love the fuck out of Mob Psycho. Um, but yeah, the, the, the animating thing, one thing we kind of forgot is as soon as the animation club opened, um, the student council was immediately gunning for them. Ooh, yeah. That's the thing is like, <laughs> that's the thing is like, what every, sh what every show that has an anime club is that one of the biggest things or problems they all, every anime club always runs into an anime is that they always run the risk of getting shut down. Yeah, because unlike cultural festival, the cultural club, or the cooking club, or sports club, there's not a clear sense of any work being done, and they are using money from the school to run these clubs to yeah. get supplies and whatnot. So when you have a club like the Psychic Club from Mob Psycho, or the Anime Club in here, that's just kind of giving you an ex they're scared that you're going to use their money to essentially do something you could just do at home and that is hang out with your friends yeah which is why when Aisu was spending given spending her money to buy hundreds and thousands of blu-rays um, the school was still coming down on them because it was still in the name of the school even though the school technically wasn't paying for it mm-hmm yeah, and the, so the anime club, even though almost immediately it was already given a fact that the anime club might have been trying to shut it down for another reason. Yeah. <laughs> like, like when they got the anime club to go through, it was like, oh god, not again. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is this show going? What happened? Um, but what were you saying? Uh, well, what was I saying? Um, we were talking about like the student council and oh yeah so <clears throat> again like um but they showed um oh, okay I, I figured out what I was saying now yeah given um I just came back from work so my energy's uh my energy's kind of out there um and Lewis just woke up from a nap like literally an hour ago like right when we started the podcast you can kind of hear in his voice how groggy he was. I'm a growing boy. This is puberty. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh no. Don't drop your voice. <laughs> I'm so, becoming a grown adult already. Yeah. A grown adult who is younger than me, given who is living by himself, though. <laughs> you make me sound like I'm homeless. <laughs> no! I'm fucking 24 and I still live with my parents. 
I wish I had a deal that you got for this place. I don't fucking care if it doesn't have a kitchen. <laughs> it's still a great deal. <laughs> no, but yeah, so <clears throat> a lot of, um, okay, I remember now what I was talking about. So a lot of the things, like, um, especially like the mainstay of like, well, one of the biggest things that these anime, um, this anime club has to face, you kind of see this happen in a bunch of other shows as well whenever they start starting their own anime clubs. Yeah. Because, again, like what you mentioned, like, like you're gonna be using school funds to like buy tech supplies and everything and then use them for whatever club activities you need. So especially when it comes in high school, it's a little harder for high schoolers to kinda of explain why a, an anime club is necessary. Yeah. And like comes like at that point like fuck, it's true, like I don't know how to like say this like in a way where like, oh no, like we we like we legit do stuff to like um, make things other. Because mm-hmm. in college, at the very least like that's when you become a little bit more masters of winging and everything like you can put in there's like no it's like this is like we're actually studying like pop culture for like the, the Japanese pop culture and everything yeah so like that's where we introduce this and like we usually introduce activities to like newcomers or like people who are like veterans of this so mm-hmm. to pretty much um get to know get to exp- uh, have an opportunity to explore this on campus yeah Grant- granted if they ever do go out of state I'll never be able to join the anime club why huh why I'm bound to this country oh okay okay God damn it. You are bound to this country. Which is what sucks because Josh is going to Japan next year and I'm like, God damn it. Now I'm kind of, I'm kind of now I want to, I wish I married the guy. You, you gotta marry someone with a green card. Hmm. No, not even the green card. Just like, just so I can get like my, um, just so I can get the passport. Passport, yeah. He is 100% a citizen here, people. <laughs> citizen. It's season. Oh, I'll be back. You okay. go for it now, Danny. So anyway, um, the anime club is kind of breathing down the neck, and one of the things that comes up is the student is um, the cultural festival, which of course is where all of the schools um, clubs have to do something. Um, so originally, the anime club was going to do a type of screener. Uh, they were going to screen an anime, and they were going to, you know talk about it, um, show an anime to the wider audience. To the student council, though, this wasn't good enough for them. So they're like, look, you're the anime club. You do animation, right? You have to make it something better than this. So the, the kids come up with the idea that maybe we should do it and make our own anime. And they do. Um, they initially start off that all of the core things in it are, um, that all of the core things in it are are done primarily by the members of the club. Um, Yui is the producer, which, given this is around the time where the kind of crossing the boundary aspect of the show starts to show a little bit more, because there was this level of cartooniness that Yui was doing while she was like playing the producer role. And then you have, um, I believe it was Miku who was primarily writing the script and you had other characters who were doing the directing, you had other characters who were in charge of key animation. Um, While they also had the other school helping them with sound equipment, helping them with additional actors. Um, oh. God damn, that sounded unpleasant. That felt, that, sound, that felt really pleasant. I just cracked my back back. Yeah, literally, it was, you walk in and all I hear is... Oh. I'm like, Ugh. I can also do this with my shoulder. No! <laughs> that was my shoulder, guys. <laughs> no. uh, that, that reminds me of that Ed and Eddie episode where they turned Johnny into like a nuisance. So they can oh. then, so the kids would pay them to get rid of him, and it's just like, come on, Johnny, let us out, a dollar, <laughs> two dollars, and he's like, he does one thing where he spins his body like a coil, and he's just here, oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, stop. No, I'm just stretching right now because my body got stiff. That's probably why you're cracking every bone in your body right now, is because how stiff your body is. No. Oh. Ah. Uh. Jesus Christ! Okay, um, let's get back to it. So I just finished telling them how the kids started um, creating the anime and how this is around the time they started kind of going over the progressing limit. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, 
also, by the way, fun fact: if you guys need a, show, a reason to watch the show, um, Minoa's best friend, her voice actress is the same one who voices Megumin. Wait, which one? The the one like the um, fan service girl. Oh, Megumi for what? From Kono Subarashi. Oh, okay. Oh, in the anime, yeah. Yeah. Because this definitely wasn't people in the same dub. Um, what are you looking at? Take your pick. What are these? They they, they gave them in the Chuni Buyo movie. Oh, who's this? She's um she's pretty much the that's the that's that was um the main character's like childhood friend that he would used to like do all those like all the Chuni Buyo stuff with. Oh, she popped up in the anime, right? Yep. Oh, okay, I know her. Oh, cute. But yeah, I'm just bringing them here right now because like, uh, uh, get ready to talk about this movie. Yeah, so so let's go through this. Um, they present the anime, and you could tell it was done by students. <laughs> it was funny though. But hey, man, compared, to, but hey, well, when you consider that it's students doing the animation and everything, it's actually came out pretty good. Uh, and let's not forget that the student council was still trying to take them down in the middle of production because they had to do that with half of the original. Um, Half of the original staff that was helping them go on. Oh, yeah. Like, it was literally the kids and the people who were supposed to do voice acting work left. And it was the kids in the group, her best friend, and then her sister and dad. Yeah. Which, there's a whole thing with the dad, which is really funny. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay, mom, we're going out of town to go to the convention. Where's dad? Oh, he went to the same town, too, to go do some business stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, man. And if anything as well, it's like, oh, if anything, <clears throat> that's actually like, that's actually like a good point that the show brings is like, the anime community is very varied. Yeah, it's very, very, it's very um, vast and wide. So if, if anything, um, a pretty good, a pretty good point that the show, that the show points out is that like, the audience like, cause when I came into like the, um, when I came, when I got into anime for like the first time, I was like, oh, it's just the thing that like, you know, us high schoolers like got into and everything like, you know, yeah. so it's like a younger audience. And I, I attended my first convention and I was like, no, there's like, there's families that actually go through here as well. Like they do their like family cosplays yeah. and then there's married couples and then like people like big social groups and everything and celebrities as well. Like, oh wow, this is a lot bigger I than I expected. I think last year we talked about how me and you, maybe just me. No, I think it was me and you because Ben was sad he never saw them. It was a family, a mom and dad, who dressed their two daughters up as baby remedies. Oh yeah! Yeah. They were so good. I was like, oh, that's And they were posing and I'm like, oh. Yeah, I know when I'm older, um, I'm definitely going to still be into anime, given hopefully the anime industry doesn't go in a direction that no one has seen it. But yeah, I, I might, hell, I'm gonna get my kids into anime, but first I want them to get into movies and respect the movies of olden times, because, well, I'll talk about that in some other podcast. My goal is to have enough children to make up a soccer team. Don't <laughs> gather. Subs included. <laughs> subs and reserves. What do you mean subs? Yeah. Oh. You got the main players, and then you've got the reserves on the bench in case something happens. Uh, God, yeah, God, what are you, uh, Michael Jackson's father? I'm having kids so we can be popular <laughs> for a band. No, I'm just having kids, right? So that way, like, I have control of my own team and be like, I don't have to worry about the recruitments because I made them. <laughs> If you get, um, you better not transfer or else you're grounded, young man. Aww. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, uh, sorry people. Anyway, yeah, it, it is really impressive that they got this done and they even had audience interaction, which I thought was really cute. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, but they make the show, it was a hit. And then they end up like being able to continue with the anime club with no repercussions at all. Until we get to a weirder episode where they end up introducing the entire school to anime. <laughs> so you have the, uh, the school baseball team freezing a baseball. So no, that was, a, that was a tennis team. A tennis team. So they can freeze a tennis ball and like 
hit it, copying the show from, uh, copying the move from the anime. I th- even think at one point they light a ball on fire. Yep. Yeah. yeah pretty much. Pretty much, this is why you don't follow the the, the, the newer version of Prince of Tennis, because shit gets pretty weird. I remember thinking how boring that show was, and then now you tell me there's an episode where they were playing tennis in the middle of a black hole. <laughs> oh no, this is like in the manga. Oh, in the manga? Like this, yeah. one, this one where like they're on a pirate ship and shit, I'm like, damn, what's going on? I, for me, actually, like watching like the, the first, the original Prince of Tennis, I, that was like more than enough for me to get excited for the sport already because I saw like, oh my god, look at the athleticism. And then like, oh shoot, the guy actually does his warm-ups properly. And I was like, oh. Um, and, then, um, and, and then of course you have the robotics club watching Gundam and trying to successfully make their own giant robot. <laughs> the, mecha, the, mecha, the, the mecha legs they had in the, the storage room. Yeah. Which blows up, and that there were like no casualties at all. And then um, and then like um, all of like the martial arts clubs, they build a pyramid outside of the school where they can have their tournaments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. And, and then what was it? Her um, um, her best friend oh. had like the science club built her like rocket legs. So, yeah, they had made they um the um, I believe it was a collaboration between robotics yeah. and then the, um the robotics club and then I forgot who who else the engineering club yeah the engineering club. They made her like these boots that would pretty much make it go faster by, by putting jets on them. Yeah. And she was able to like do like long jumps like um, she was able to do like the pole vaults a lot a lot more easier. Yeah, because the whole thing with this <laughs> character is not only is she there for blatant fan service and the show is well aware of this, like literally before the before I mean I mean who can blame her? She's an athlete. Yeah. Before the show starts, like before the opening starts up. They have one scene of fan service. Like, have you noticed that? Yeah, I mean, before it starts, it's always like that one, like that one sequence where it's like her, like they showing her off, like um, in one way, and then the mu- and then the opening music starts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then there was even that weird opening where she was every character. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what is happening here? Uh, but that was when the show took a turn. Um, uh, what what was it? So. So yeah, you see stuff like that happening, you see like other characters, you see other people taking notes from characters in anime, um, obvious Dragon Ball Z references running around. I'm not gonna lie, that was me in the, that was me during high school tennis. <laughs> I actually tried to copy the moves from Prince of Tennis, from Prince of Tennis. <laughs> I, actually ma- I actually managed to master the serve that he does, the jumping serve. Hmm. And then, to be honest, the advantages are negligible. Sure, you get more open court to jump into, but there's just so many things you gotta keep track of. Yeah. But I can do it consistently. <laughs> That's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> so, then there is, um... But then they end up getting interviewed by, like, the news. Mm-hmm. And after the interview goes well, um, the, the news crew was gonna pay the money, and, like, the guy's like, no, we're not allowed to take money or anything. But then Nakano, creepily enough, like almost like the devil on his shoulder, pops up and says, take it, you can use it to buy a new DV something system. The D- DVD system for the, for the club room. They didn't call it DVD though. Oh, that's that true. was the thing. I, I forget what the actual name was. I'm like, you guys can't even say DVD, not even DVR, really. I think if anything, it might have been an actual like name for like product that they used to play like Either VHS, VHS types and then C and then um, CDs on the simultaneously. Oh yeah, maybe. I it could be that. So he even says like DVR. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. DVR. Yeah, and he's like, yes, take it, take it. So he does take it, and then immediately the class, the club gets shut down because school clubs are not supposed to take money from outside sources, mm-hmm. and he can't give the money back because he already spent it. Um, so the classroom gets shut down, we see the principal for the first time ever, and the next episode is literally them just trying to find a way to come back. And they go to, um, they go to the principal, Minoa goes to the principal, which for some reason he has a high-tech security door that still has a kitty door underneath it though. <laughs> And she goes in and starts telling him how much she loves anime, and she starts telling him about the anime that he 
that that um, that inspired her to make that crappy anime that they did because he one of the reasons he shut them down too was he hated that anime they made and she's like oh wait the other one who created that anime I love oh that's amazing that inspired me to make this he's like oh god I'm responsible for that trash you made <laughs> so he um, they end up like trying to figure out what is this anime he's talking about. And Arisu's like running around, going into forums, and there was even a guy who heard her in passing who like typed in what, what was it supposed to be? One of the titles? I can't remember. Like he typed in a word and then that's when it really set fire to what the show was called. Um, but I still love that joke how like Arisu does a live stream trying to uh, find it. <laughs> and then you have all the people like, hmm, I can't think of the anime. Wait, I think I do remember that anime. Arisu, notice me! And then when everyone's like, oh yeah, you made that anime, you're awesome, yay! <laughs> you just see the guy like, Arisu, marry me. <laughs> um, he ends up um, revealing that yes, the principal was the creator of Minoa's favorite anime, but it got canceled after one episode because, you, you know, it was awful. But it really did sound like it had a cult following because there were still people who had, like, the little posters that were released from the show. And, um, it was a... It, that gives them enough incentive to probably go back. They never really say what happened to him, but probably go back and maybe try to get that anime started again in one yeah. way or another. Um... But they're able to do the club freely now. Everything's happy. But this is a 13 episode series. And the show can't just end at 11 episodes. And this is kind of when I... I'm like 50-50 on what, what, what... On the role they did. So Lewis, how about you walk us into this? Because hmm, it is towards the end. I'm kind of, I'm kind of debating with myself. I was like, should we just... Should we discuss this? Or should we just let people... Because you, know you know what, I don't want to predispose them to our opinions just yet on those last two. I kind of want them to experience like, okay, watch those last two episodes and then maybe like on a, in the comments, like once we like the show gets posted and everything, they tell us like, okay, what do you think? Like, were those necessary? Uh, or what was like, what were your opinions on those last two episodes? Okay. Because yeah. I kind of like, you know, I get, I know what you mean about it. Like, I get mixed feelings about those last two as well. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I my, my my whole thing was just I I, I don't know. Um, they were setting us up little by little, especially by episode nine. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there was Neku, I think I forget what his name was. Which one? Uh, the cat. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, he named him Neko. Yeah, the 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 cat was um a, a dead giveaway because for some reason the anime club's mascot is a cat with sunglasses. I'm not going to say anything else more about the cat, but yeah, there's a cat with sunglasses in there. Um, the red beret disappears and flies off into the world, and that later comes back. Someone finds it. Yeah. So, that'll be... Okay, you know what? That'll be it for now. Um, yeah. But anything... Ooh, put the um, final thoughts for the show, and then we'll go into like the, uh, go into a little bit of like um, of, um, if anything. I want to give this a try. If anything, you guys let us know. Yeah. But um, how would well, how would you guys like for us to like just have like a little bit of like um like um what was it what was it like casual talk yeah you know, casual talk and everything we would just like talk about something that we um that we experienced in like our day everyday lives and we discuss it here. Mm. You know like how like I went to like Los Angeles Anime Film Festival like whenever we go to like independent events or anything how about we have something like casual talk where we would talk about those events as well. And oh we no. Thought about it. Heck, I wouldn't even, um, I wouldn't even take into account. I would love to do that. Yeah, um... Just so that way, like, we don't make the episodes too lengthy or anything. And then, like, afterwards, like, it could be, like, its own little section as well. Yeah, I can always edit it out and yeah. stuff. Um, but, yeah, we can do that right now. We'll go into final thoughts. Um, let me just go set up the ending. I forgot what the ending was, though. <laughs> it's so catchy! <laughs> So, oh god. So, um, this show, my opinion of the show overall, very different from what I initially thought of it, is it, the show is good. It is one of those type of shows that, as much as you may cringe at the dialogue, you may find some of the characters a little jarring, 
It's still a very important show within our community because it is one of the few shows that instead of going into animation or writing in the world of anime, they are going directly into the fandom. Um, and yeah, given it gets really fucking crazy near the end, like holy shit what was happening. Um, they, um, they did a good job. I think the animation is very cute. Um, the, the characters, of course, are fucking adorable because this is technically a Moe show still. Um, the, I definitely do like the characters. I found a lot of them relatable. And yeah, the one character that I don't like in this show isn't because she's necessarily a bad character. It's because I've had a run-in with plenty of types of her people, which she, she represents almost to a T. Like, I wouldn't even say she's an over-exaggeration, I would even say she's more tame than some of the people I've met like her. <laughs> but yeah, overall, um, I definitely recommend the show for people. It's a shame that it came out in October of last year, 2017, and I barely found out about it. And I'm like, how is there not a lot of people talking about this? Maybe the community isn't taken by the show like we are or something, I don't know. Because I saw a lot of, like, for me and Facebook, I definitely saw a lot of people talking about it from, well, on my end. Yeah, there, there was no... I need to watch Gigguk's fall anime review. I don't... if I'm sure, I don't even think he talked about it. I don't uh, think it was in on his coverage. I don't remember. Yeah, because that guy, <laughs> um, does a really... that guy is, like, the... one of the few people who... They, I'm like, oh shit, what's this? Oh, let me watch that. If it wasn't for him, I would have never watched Thunderbolt Fantasy because I'm like, okay, it's a show with dolls. And then he played a little clip of one of the fight scenes and like, holy shit, I want to watch this. But what about you, Lewis? What were some of the things you liked about this? So for me, a lot of like, what, um, a lot of what the show, um, what I liked about the show is pretty much what I kind of liked about Love, Chunibuyo, and other delusions as well. Is like. A lot of the things that happened in this show, like they do kind of hit a little close to home for me as well. Like, oh yeah, I remember things happening this for me when I first got into anime and everything. Like, oh, this character's like, um, especially Yui Senpai is like, oh yeah. Like definitely a lot of the things that she does, like this is the reason why I got into cosplaying a lot as well. Because when I first did it, like amateurly, like I remember how happy I got when I met somebody else in the fandom. They were like, it's like they didn't care how trashy you were. Like if you dress as a character, like even if it's as, as obscure as possible, like, it just brightens the day and everything like this, like, oh yeah, I remember, like, I remember this character didn't get as much hype as they did. Yeah, I, I remember, um, what is it, like, we're going to cover this show very soon, but, um, it's going to be half a redo and then half talking about the second season, but, um, I remember when I cosplayed Mr. Sato from, uh, Ajin, and I was like, there's not a lot of people who I know who seem to like this show. And then I got stopped like, oh my god, you're Mr. Sato. And given it wasn't even that good of a cosplay, it was a passable one. I got the costume down, but I didn't bother with a wig and I didn't bother with anything else. So you still see a goofy looking Latino dude a little, a little above of what um, Mr. Sato's supposed to look like. And people are still like losing their shit when they saw my costume because I was one of the few people cosplaying him. <laughs> so what were you saying? Oh dang, that sounded so sad. That sounds so creepy. What? <laughs> like when you're like... We're, 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 we're. Yeah, we're being haunted by evil anime characters. Well, yeah, and then like especially as well like when you told, you told me about those girls from like from, from Magical Girl Raising Project. Mm -hmm. They were so happy when you like we actually knew who they were. Yeah. Like, like literally I stopped when I was, I'm like, wait, are you Sister Nana? They're like, oh my god, yes. Oh, you know the show? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, oh, there's a hot girl, Alice. And you just see a girl like casually typing away at her phone. And he's like, oh, look, look, he watches the show. And she gets up and she's like, oh my god. Because <laughs> for me, those little moments are what make cosplay worth it. It's not a matter of like, like if you're like, um, not a matter of like if you're doing it, like whether it's competitiveness or anything or like, no, I mean like not competitive as in like being petty competitive, but like actually joining the competitions to display the cosplay or anything. Yeah. But for me, what makes cosplaying worth it a lot is just being able to like, just meet that one person, like be that one other fan who's like totally into that character that you're dressing up as as well and then just be talking your heads off about that character like, oh yeah, like I remember when I first saw this character, like I thought, I knew for a fact like, damn, I want to dress up as this person now because either A, they look stylish, or B, this person looks so badass, or yeah. C, this person was so funny in the show, I just couldn't help but relate with them. Yeah. Um, anything else about the show? 
Um, <laughs> yeah. Definitely. We, we got to do these um, topic podcasts, definitely. Yeah. Definitely for me, like, the way it just, like, talks about general things about being an anime fan, whether attending the conventions or... Um, <laughs> Or going through phases where you include like things you see in anime in your daily sports lives. Yeah. I'm guilty of this a lot. But hey, I had the athletic enough athleticism to pull off some of it. And hey, I mean the good part is I did pr- I did I did get results in um I did get results when I was in the varsity team. So my coach was like more or less like okay I guess, but still don't do that when I'm looking. Oh god! And I'm like yay. <laughs> That got away. It's like I can leave out now. Um, anything else? Mm, <clears throat> aside from like the relatable shows and everything, for me, I just found it was like just, just the comedic, the comedy and everything. Yeah. Like, the struggles they face and everything. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Not because they struggled, but because I found the struggles relatable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Suffer. Yeah. No. It wasn't like magical girl sight. Like it was just like. The first episode is literally every over-the-top edgy thing in one episode. Mm-hmm. Hey, we put a shit ton of razor blades in your shoes. Oh, hey, we killed a kitty that was your only friend. Hey, we called an upperclassman to try to rape you. <laughs> Wait, what? Magical Girl Sight? It came out last season, I think. And it was by the same creator as Magical Girl... Um, Apocalypse. I don't. Oh, I don't think I watched Magical Girl Sight. I I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> um, hold up. It was. Uh, hold up, but yeah, it it was a show that I'm just like. The more I'm watching Happy Happy Sugar Life, I'm just like, please don't turn into this. Please don't turn into this. Um, it turns into a magical girl show. No, it turns into a show that's just, oh. yeah. Okay, this looks familiar. Yeah, it turns into a show that's edgy just for the sake of being edgy. Um, I really hope it doesn't turn into something like that. Uh, but yeah, so is that it? Um, no. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, okay. So, Lewis, we still have 30 minutes. Um, did you have to, you said you started work at 6, not that you have work at 6. I started work at 6 in the morning, yeah. Okay, I thought you, when you were saying that earlier, I thought you said you have work at 6. But then you were saying how you just came from work, so I'm like, oh, thank God. Okay, so, um, hold up. Actually, I need to cue something up, because when I was looking at that card, I noticed there was a particular word on that card. <laughs> Which one? That I ain't telling you yet. Oh, oh no. <laughs> All right. Time to, time to translate. Okay, so. Banishmental, this one! No! Hold up, hold up, people. I, I'm, I'm getting something ready. I'm getting something ready, just, just be patient. Will I be able to beat Daddy? And we'll find out in this next episode of dun, dun, that Amazing. Dun, 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 dun. I was about to say anime guitars. <laughs> oh! <laughs> that happened in the theater. Yeah, no shit, the, the movie is literally called... Take on me. Yeah, take on me. <laughs> Hold on, let's get to it. No! God damn it. Copyright strike? <laughs> no. <laughs> I've never been copyright strike before. I hope we don't. Oh. That's literally like some guy started singing that and then every bump and then I started following after him as well before because um there was some tech um this year there were a little bit of technical difficulties when the movie actually started. Yeah. So we just had a bit of downtime and like every every one of us were like just messing around. Mm-hmm. And then one guy actually started singing the Take On Me song and we're like perfect. Perfect. Uh, um what what was it? I, I I remember when um when we went to the JoJo panel on um when when they were premiering the dub for Jojo a couple of years back and every time the video was freezing and acting up somebody Zawardo. was yelling Zawardo! <laughs> Zawardo! <laughs> That's so perfect. Mm, give me a trailer, baby. Give me a trailer. <laughs> and my original character. Yep. Mm-hmm. That caught me off guard. <laughs> what is she saying? I want to go. Oh, I want to go for it. <laughs> like she was down for the eloping. Oh wow. 
<laughs> I have no idea. I'm so lost. <laughs> All these scenes. <laughs> oh. He has PTSD right now, people. So, a little bit of background for me and why this show has like a special place in my heart as well. So, <laughs> You're deeply ashamed of this show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cool with the show. This was me definitely back in um, elementary school and middle school. Uh, but and I used, I have like no shame towards the show at all. You're the one that's flat out like, oh, I hate the show. This is me. I love it, but uh, it's so painful to watch because <laughs> it hits way too close to home. <laughs> so a little synopsis like um, the show like Ch Love Chuni Buyo or Delusions or in Japanese as Chuni Buyo Demo Koi Ga mm -hmm. So pretty much <clears throat> damn, I'm starting to I'm starting to turn into a Joey. Get that Australian accent, mate. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I love you. <laughs> yeah, no, with Joey, I'm just like, can you say the American name too? <laughs> you have a primarily American audience watching you. <laughs> um, anyway, what were you saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah no offense to Joey. <laughs> but yeah, for me, like, um, when I first started watching the show, like, I only watched it because, like, so many people, like, um, so many people on the internet would make a lot of memes of Rika. So, like, when I saw, like, with the eye patch and everything, which... By the way, I was one of those people who like thought um who thought it was um, um was it another was the show I was watching I was like holy shit the show's a lot darker than the memes later. Yeah, yeah. I'm really glad that never happened to me, but it happened to me where I watched Dead Man Wonderland thinking it was Bloodland for some reason. I'm like this doesn't look. I don't see any of the characters from the cover I saw at Best Buy. <laughs> no, it was me when I first watched another and I thought it was Chuni Ryo, but then after I finished, I was like, huh, hmm, you know what? I feel like people might have been like bullshitting me, and then they're like, oh, I watched a different show. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, also, um, fun fact too, Daniel, uh, my friend hey, Daniel. There goes Danny again, speaking in the third person about his imaginary friends. Hey, I don't, none of my brothers watch anime. So anyway, Daniel <laughs> and his brother ended up watching um, the show. But they started at the second season because Country World did this weird thing where they split the show in half. Oh. So if you needed to watch, you needed to watch the season one, and then you click on season two's link. Um, so they ended up watching the first episode of the first season, and they legitimately thought it was a fantasy show, not realizing that Rika's tyrant eye was a was a um, a, a contact. Oh yeah. Yeah. If they thought it was a legitimately magical show, probably making fun of Cutie Boos while actually having a magical element in there. Yeah. But um, no, it, it flat out is like, no, that's an eye contact. <laughs> My favorite meme with Rika, it, if you go on SoundCloud, it's a, uh, it's a thumbnail for one of the videos. I think it might be for the Shinny Boo episode. But it was the one where it's like, haha, you thought it be, you thought underneath the eye patch was the tyrant's eye, but it was me, Dio! No. <laughs> and you just see Dio's face inside because I <laughs> <laughs> I think I know which meme you're talking about. Oh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, t t tell us, uh, continue on more with the backstory. Sorry, I took over there. No, don't worry about it, man. But yeah, so like the whole thing about it is, is like the story is pretty much about this girl with like delusions of like herself being like this, you know, this all powerful like um character who has like magic powers that if for whatever reason, if she takes off her eye patch, like she's afraid she's gonna like destroy the world. Mm -hmm. But you gotta think about it, these are delusions in her head only. Yeah. And for me, this is a show that over time, the more and more like um, the more and more like I kept rewatching it, the more it, it I love and hated it. Because <laughs> again, I can totally relate to all the things that Rika and then especially um, especially the main character. I forgot his name. Yuta. Yuta. There you go. Yuta would do as well because the thing with him is that like. He used to be, he, he had this alter ego persona as well, we called himself the Dark Flame Master. Yeah. So he'd literally show up to school like every day with like a bandage and everything, I will be back, that's my call. Yeah. But continue then. And if I'm right, I think he ended up, lat so they were neighbors, and she ended up latching on to Yuta after he was kind of remembering back in the days when he was a hardcore Junibio. And... He reenacted his old bit, 
And then Rika witnessed it and then started following him around and bothering him like a sick puppy. Yeah. <laughs> they were neighbors, right? Yep. She was like above from him? Absolutely, absolute neighbors. <laughs> she, I remember those episodes where she would literally drop from her balcony onto his. <laughs> like, bitch, you're crazy. But oh my god. But, oh, yeah, not for the main reason why we're talking about this. Well, recently, actually yesterday, just as recently as yesterday, um, Ch- the, um, Chunibuyo actually had a new movie called Chunibuyo Love, um, Chunibuyo Love, um, Love Delicious and Chunibuyo Take On Me, the movie. Yeah. And this is pretty much supposed to be the conclusion to all of some, all, all of the seasons of like the, the, the show goes. And yesterday was actually the North American premiere of the, of the subtitle version. Oh, wow. Was there any talk of a dub happening? No? The, today's a dub. Okay. That sucks. <laughs> I'm gonna say this right now, as the dub man here, I fucking hate that dub. I've never seen a show where I'm like, well, I don't have time to watch the show in subtitles, I need to multitask. No, make time. Because the dub, by, by my arch nemesis, Sentai Filmworks, fucking sucks. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> uh, continue on with this. <laughs> but yeah, yesterday was like the sub, the sub and everything, and like the thing that I, you know, I was actually kind of sad this year, they didn't have any merchandise for the movie. Oh, like they did with, um... With, um, with No Game No Life Zero. Yeah. Because last year, like, the, the, like, they actually stationed, like, a little, um, they actually stationed stables where you can buy, like, merchandise and everything, like, pins, posters, and whatever. Mm-hmm. And, like, this year I didn't get to see it, I was like, oh, I was kind of hoping to buy my Chudi Buyo gear. I was hoping they were going to sell eye patches. Yeah. Or give out eye patches. Not even, like, cheap or paper eye patches. Come on, people. I know. I was like, oh. Okay, I guess. Mm, they probably weren't prepared for it. No, they were more prepared this year. Last year was like last year, like they literally they did on the last year. It was confusing as to like, okay, where do we IP, where do we put VIPs and where do we put general entrances? Lines got congested. Yeah. This year they were actually more they were actually more more um, more unprepared. Yeah, and this is at the Rigo LA Live, which is like. Fucking gorgeous theater. Yep. It's a very cheap, gorgeous theater too. I'm looking at you, Pacific theaters. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, continue on. You're like, oh my God, the movie. <laughs> it just, it just, oh, it just summarizes Chunyi Buyo so perfectly. So can you tell us the plot of this movie? Because even watching the trailer, I couldn't keep up with the frantic subtitles. <laughs> so what is this film about? So this film, Chunyi Buyo on Take On, on Take On Me. It's literally, it's literally um, pretty much um, after like Re- um, Rika, uh, uh, spoiler alert, after Rika starts living with like Yuta and everything just so like he, she can she can prove to like her um, big sister yeah. that she's actually growing out of her like face. Who is an anime original character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought that was actually interesting that a good portion of characters in the show are anime originals. The, the big sister, um, her best friend. And then a love interest for one of the other characters. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so pretty much this show, um, her sister says that she's going to be taking Rika over, um, with her over to Italy. And so, like, um, Yuta, he kind of, like, he's just thinking, like, oh, it's just going to be a spring, um, like, a spring break kind of thing deal. Like, oh, she'll be back for, like, the new semester and everything. Because mm-hmm. they, they already planned that they're going to go to the same college and everything. Mm-hmm. But then, um, but then that's when her big sister tells him, like, no, it's like, our mother's finally, like, going to be working over there. So I'm going to be taking her, her, her with me for good. So that's why we're moving all, all of her stuff and everything out. And so for them, like, this is like, this is like where the drama kicks in, we're like, wait, but like, I don't want Rika to go, like, like, she's actually making good progress, it's like, she actually wants to go to college and everything. Although, <laughs> not gonna lie, her grade, she did have to take a lot of remedial courses just to be able to pass them to the next grade. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like her. <laughs> <laughs> and so the whole show, the whole, the whole plot of the show is that you thought, is pretty much running away with um with Rika to prove to her to her big sister like no like Rika really really serious about this and it's also um it's also more about like him like thinking about about the relationship and like you know what like this whole time like I've been I've really been um I was like I said like I really love her and everything but I've only like I've let her do everything herself and everything so like in a way it's kind of hurting her yeah so this is more like this whole state show is not only like, running away from her sister so that she he, she doesn't like get whisked away from him for good yeah but it's also like them developing the relationship in a more mature way as well like you see like oh my god yeah so the the one thing and again we are probably going to do uh, the more i hear the more i talk about it the more i think it should a return to the series is in order but the one thing i loved about this show was how this is a proper example of 
when you find someone who is your keyhole, when you find someone that you just fit together perfectly, it may not look like it at first because he wasn't a cunibrio. He was a kid trying to escape that life, didn't want anyone to find out he was that, and then he meets this girl who is. So he got a girl who went through what he went through, but at the same time is very caring, she's kind, she genuinely cares for him, and at the same time, she found a person who completely relates to what she's going through and knows how to talk to them. Mm. And that was one of the great things I loved while, we were, while I was watching this series, was seeing this relationship go from an annoying friendship because let's not forget, there was a lot of abuse in this show. Yep. <laughs> there was a lot of spanking and hitting in the back of the head. Yep. But yeah, it was to eventually turn it into a romance where they were genuinely falling in love with each other and season two is them trying to communicate onwards as a couple. And By the way, really good date movie. It is a really good date movie. Uh, even anime too. Like just watch the anime. Um, watch the anime with a special other. Um, or if you have a weird significant other, then pick any other anime. <laughs> God, I really hope I never meet someone who's like, you know what would be a great date anime? Parasite. Oh uh, no. <laughs> I mean, hot, but no. Um, but but yeah, like I, I'm glad to hear that they're continuing that on in this movie. And I was like, oh my god, it was so hard. It was so hard, wrenching. I was like, oh, that movie was so good, man. When it quit, guys, support the movie, buy the Blu-ray. Yeah, buy the Blu-ray. The sub version. The, yes, the sub. Um, god, why did they have to make a dub for that? They, there's so many other animes they could have made dub for us, but they didn't make a dub. I'm even starting to, to figure out why Ushio and Tora's dub was so fucking good. Because the difference with Ajin and Nice of Sidonia, they have amazing dubs. But the dub wasn't in charge, wasn't handled by Sentai. It was handled by people in Burbank. Um, you know, like uh, the people who did Kill I Kill, Crash the Zoom. Mm-hmm. It was handled by that studio. And at least I think so. Um, and like Sentai, they just threw the movie on Blu-ray and boom, that's it. This one was them in studio, so you get a lot of voice actors who should not be voicing that character. Um, they have no real sense of trying to voice match the anime, the, the Japanese actors. Rika has a very deep voice in that anime. Oh, yeah. Like, the only reason I remember Yuta is because my favorite thing in the anime was Yuta! Yuta! The dub. Yuta! Yuta! That was the dub. That was how deep her voice is in the dub. Dang. I want to kill myself now, just thinking about that dub. Oh my god, my god. <laughs> anyway. Oh, uh, sorry. Lewis is like, I don't know where to go with this now. No, so, I've never seen the dub, so I'm like thinking about it like, dang, I didn't know it was going to be like that. It was bad. It was really bad. It, w- it was almost like school lift bad. I've never seen school lift. Yeah, no, don't. Don't. Don't watch the dub for that. <laughs> I, didn't even, I didn't even watch the actual show. What the f- School lift. Oh, that the zombie actually, show. I keep thinking, I, think, I keep thinking. Every time you say that, I keep associating it love live. Because like Ben keeps talking yeah. the shit out of the show. I'm like, yeah. Oh. There's so many people like, oh, I don't like idol shows. And I'm like, it's not an idol show. Oh, I get what you mean. No. I keep, <laughs> every time you say school live, because like that, that Ben always keeps talking about love live, I keep associating it with that. I was like, oh, no, I never watched that show to begin with. No, man. Yeah, you were like one of the few people who saw that show, and I was the only one talking about it. <laughs> um, no, not only saw it. Oh, well, what? Like, where the hell are you? Oh. <laughs> but starting the collection as well. Good, because we're nine volumes in. Um, we officially caught up to the point where it's already been a year since the last release. Oh, dang. So, anything else, Liz? Ah, watch the movie. Watch the movie. Los Angeles Anime Film Festival is pretty good. Pretty huge success. Yeah, I need to go to that next year. Hopefully they play something I actually want to see, though. <laughs> you didn't want to see the Chunibuyo movie? I didn't even know it was a thing until you told me. 
Oh. Um, one thing I do need to see if I'm gonna have time for this week, I'm probably gonna check it on my way home, is the My Hero Academia movie. I think it's this week. No, I don't remember. <laughs> No, I don't think it's at the Anime Film Festival. No, I'm no, I'm talking about like just in general. I don't remember because I I know I know a couple of my friends have been following that. Oh, my hero academia. Yeah. Have you not? I thought you were watching it. Huh? I thought you were keeping up with it. <laughs> trying. Trying. Remember, I'm in university now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying my best. <laughs> the only one I'm making for sure to keep up with is Overlord. Yeah, I know. That uh, one, that's the one we're like, mm, <laughs> next week on the um, next week. What's gonna, what's Bone Daddy gonna do? I'm okay. probably, that's Ainz's new title. I don't care. They're gonna call him the Sorcery King. I want him, I wanted him to be known as Bone Daddy. Bone Daddy. By the way, if anybody plans to make an abridged version of Overlord, y'all bitches better call him Bone Daddy. Probably. Uh, I I don't know. These are let's see. Uh, September twenty fifth. I think I have work off that day. Cool. Okay, I'll probably, you guys can probably find me at the, at the My Hero Academia movie. Uh, ooh, September 25th? Yeah. That's an exciting day for me. Huh? That's an exciting day for me. Why was the 25th? Hmm? What's the release of Valkyria Chronicles 4. September? 25th. Oh, that's literally not in a few days. Tuesday, yeah. Yeah. I still gotta buy Galga. <laughs> I wanna buy it, I'm not lying. I wanna buy it, that game looks fun, even if it is pervy. Um, anyway, um, uh, is that it? Yep. Okay. Anyway, guys, huh? Uh, no, I'm just like, I'm just like breathing. Oh, okay. Anyway, guys, that was our show. Um, that was an amazing, uh, thank you f once again for coming down and listening to it in our very, very small listener base. I swear to God, the YouTube channel's not dead. Um, seriously, go check out, um, our other episodes on SoundCloud because I guarantee you they will not be there for long. And the reason for that is it's just becoming too much, too much financial things are popping up now and having to maintain, still paying for a service that I'm no longer using um, is becoming a little cost effective. So Cost ineffective. Cost ineffective. Thank you. Thank you. I just sounded like the biggest idiot right now. Um, so that's going to go away and I'm going to spend the next couple of weeks of free time trying to upload as much as the oldest stuff. Um, I will guarantee that a lot of the Oscar era and amazing stuff is not going to be up there because I kind of just want to focus on the current era right now. Oscar is still a very dear friend to me, but I do want to focus on that now. And plus, and amazing will save me a whole lot of time uploading just our stuff. What are you doing? <laughs> Magic. Continue. Anyway. Do not mind me. <laughs> anyway, I'm Danny. I'm the Squatcher. And I have to smack the Squatcher at the back of the head. <laughs> now I'm joking. Alright, see you guys. Bye. Look, I made the magic circle. Oh god, demon warrior! <laughs> Oops. <laughs>